In this video, we're gonna take this weld on Reese hitch and attach it to my 1994-ish Yamaha golf cart. So I got this weld on Reese hitch that I'm gonna put in here. I thought about mounting it under here in a way, but this barely, barely, barely fits on my trailer. Like this smashes up against the spare tire and then the front bumper, I have to like push it a little bit to get the back gate to close. So I mean like literally an inch longer and it would not fit on my trailer. So I decided I'm gonna put the Reese hitch in here. I got one of these adjustable drop hitches. They go into like a truck or whatnot. I'm gonna run it upside down in this. It's gonna go like this. So that way the golf cart's not lifted or anything. It's kind of low, but I mean, still it's kind of a good height. But if I have this drop hitch in here, I can run stuff at this angle or at this height. I have a garden trailer that would attach to here pretty well. It's a little higher than a normal trailer. And then for instance, like the tear drops a little higher, I could pull it around with it being at this position. Uh, I also got a, uh, a two inch ball to put in here, but I'm not gonna do it very tight, just a one inch shank. So that way I can take it on and off, depending on what I'm doing. And then the adjustments that, get the, that have this go up and down are also pinned, so there's not any uh, bolts or anything you have to undo. But for the most part, I'm usually probably gonna run it with no nothing in there and that way it doesn't interfere with your feet or anything it's gonna sit about right there and nobody ever rides on the back of this anyway but that's the plan and I guess let's get to it all right so I want to find the center this is right here is metal so I want to find the center of this it's about 25 inches so split that's 12 and a half right about there's the center there so mark it there mark it there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to notch this metal out so I want to cut it with an angle grinder maybe an inch down so that way it gives me something to weld to so I can weld like around the edge and then I'm worried about it wiggling like this a little bit so I want to attach something on the back but I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet let me take out this piece of mat and see what's underneath of it because if there's metal underneath of it I could probably just like weld like a like a little piece of tubing or something under there so let's see what's under that mat I think I'm just gonna have to kind of cut it and then figure out what I have back there then get a piece of like angle iron or something and weld it and then weld to it so let's cut this out first and see what we see where we get from there Look at that. Perfect. And then actually I have this little piece here. It's really hot, but uh, might be able to weld that right there. I don't know, that's definitely not big enough. Well All right, so now that that's sanded down, this fits. And I found this piece, it was actually a piece of an old Harbor Freight trailer, but uh, I think if I cut it down like a half inch or so, this would be perfect for a spacer there, then this, that way this can stay level. Um, so let me go cut this and we'll see what that does. Okay, that's definitely not perfect, but uh, it will definitely do. This is kind of bent, so it bends down a little bit, but uh, this will work fine. So I'm going to scuff that up and weld it in. All right, this is why I want to put that piece in the back. See this flex it has? I'm not sure that it's going to fix that, but it can't make it worse, I don't think.
All right, fun fact. Actually, YouTube t updated their terms and service, and you're no longer allowed to criticize people's welds on YouTube. Uh, that is official uh, terms of service. But uh, there it is. It's welded in there. For this kind of stuff I'm going to be doing, like literally pulling a trailer around empty around the yard and like a garden trailer, this is more than enough strength. I mean, it flexes a little bit, but like the whole bumper's flexing. There's not really much more I can do. And I kind of like that. I was kind of skeptical about this at first, but this is kind of cool because, I mean, I also have like a, I don't know. It's just kind of cool. I can put a flag in it and drive around the campground. You can do all kinds of stuff with that. All right, so I put the uh, rubber mat back in. I just cut it around it and made it fit. Uh, I hit it with a coat of black spray paint. It's still wet, but looks good. And uh, I kind of put the hitch on there. So let's go test it out on a trailer and see how it actually performs. All right, here we go. If it doesn't fall off over that, gosh, I think we're all set. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I forgot to put the ball thing on. <laughs> and that's why you hook up the safety chains. Well, crap. I almost didn't hook the safety chains up. <coughs> Coming in hot again. Well, I think it's safe to say that it's going to hold up. I mean, it hasn't completely broke off, and it's not really even bent. I mean, I can't say it hasn't bent at all, but, like, it's... That's as rough as it's going to be. I got a piece of diamond plate on here, and I was flying and hitting bumps and stuff, and you actually even saw it blew off the end of the trailer. But I think that's where I'm going to end this video. <coughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll let you know how this holds up in the future, if it ever breaks.